fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hal Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Boom, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! There was only one reason why young Doc Rand couldn't get along with Aunt Lucy Foreman. Aunt Lucy had liked the boy well enough when he first came back from medical school and started his practice in the town of Portage. Then, one day... Why, hello, Aunt Lucy. How are you? Oh, poorly, Doctor. Poorly. That's my heart again. Uh, let me get you a chair. Uh, there you are. How's Marilyn? Oh, that girl. She'll be the death of me yet. Well, she's only a child. Doesn't know her own mind. And all she talks about is... Well, I expect you know what she thinks about all the time. Getting married? To a young man of medicine? I hope. You hope? Why, that child ain't old enough She's to get... 20 years old, Aunt Lucy. Well, what's 20 years old? Why, for land Lots sake. of women are raising families when they're 20 years of age. Is that so? Well, now you just listen to me, young man. I'll have you know that my niece is not... I, uh, your heart, Aunt Lucy. Hmm? Oh, uh, yes, you, you better give me something for a doctor. It's, it's awful bad. Uh, you want to test it with your, uh, uh stereoscope? No, <laughs> Now, this is the fourth time you've come to see me about your heart, Aunt Lucy. I don't think we'll need this stethoscope today. That's what I meant, stethoscope. Uh, you're going to uh, give me something for my heart? Yes, I'm going to give you some strong medicine. Strong? What are you going to give me? Some advice that will probably kill you if your heart's as bad as you seem to think it is. What? Well, what on earth There's you... nothing wrong with your heart, and you know it. The only thing that's bothering you is myself. Well, of all You've the... had Marilyn tied onto your apron strings for so long you can't bear the thought of doing without her. Why, you You've impudent You've completely young... ignored Marilyn's right to happiness, to a life of her own. Whenever the girl even thinks about her own life, you carry on with your make-believe heart attacks and just about scare the daylights out of her. Young man, if you think for one minute I'm going to... I think up... you'll do everything in your power to keep Marilyn and me from getting married. I wouldn't have that girl married to you if you were the last man on earth. No, of course not. But if I were somebody like Jack Blair... A lot of money and power. Jack Blair's a mighty fine young man. He's got a future ahead of him. Why, he could provide Marilyn with all the comforts of life. Yeah. And you too, huh? Hmm. Well, if... Well, he comes from a fine old family. You mean a rich old family, don't you? His father owns a bank, which he got by stepping on people's faces. Now young Jack is running for sheriff. And he'll get elected, too. Now, you wait to see. I don't doubt it. His father will see to that. So Jack can go around foreclosing mortgages for him. You just wait and say... 
Marilyn. How long have you been standing there? Long enough, Aunt Lucy. Don't you think we'd better go home now? Marilyn, I hope you don't think I meant what I said to your... It's all right, Carl. Aunt Lucy's upset. That's all. Upset, am I? Here I've worked my fingers to the bone for you. And, and all the gratitude I get for it. <laughs> Let's go home now. Uh, uh, and Carl. Uh, yes? Uh, when I get married, I'll make up my own mind. Understand? I I think I do. Goodbye. For now. Goodbye. Take it easy for a spell. You see that young doctor? Him and Lucy had a terrible round. Practically kicked her right out of his office. On the day that Jack Flair was elected the office of sheriff, he called at the home of Aunt Lucy Foreman and her niece, Marilyn. Come in, Jack. Aunt Lucy will be down in a moment. Well, shucks, Marilyn. I guess you know I come to see you more than Aunt Lucy. You hadn't better let her hear you say that. I suppose you heard the news about me getting elected. Congratulations. Why, Jack Blair, how nice of you to call on us today of all days. Marilyn, wasn't it nice of Jack to come over? Congratulations, Jack. I knew you'd win. Um... Thanks, Aunt Lucy. Now, you two just sit here and visit while I go to the kitchen and make some coffee. Well, I... Aunt don't... Lucy. Yes? I'm sorry, but uh, you'll have to entertain the sheriff. I'm going out. Uh, some shopping. Well, well, Marilyn, can't you shop and wait? I'm afraid not. You see, Carl and I are getting married. Well, married? Married. Tomorrow. <gasps> oh. 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 Oh, oh my, my heart. My heart. My poor heart. Jack, help me. Marilyn, Marilyn, wait. You'd better make Aunt Lucy comfortable, Sheriff. I'll ask Dr. Rand to come over right away. Uh, yeah. You'd better do that, Marilyn. Oh, oh, my heart. My poor heart. Oh, my poor heart. Oh. But, Marilyn, there isn't anything I can do for her. She hasn't got heart trouble any more than I have. Oh, please, Carl. Go over anyway. And if I do, does that mean you're going to change your mind about us? My mind is made up. If I can't marry the man I love, why, well, I'll never marry. All right, honey. She'll probably throw me out the door with her weak heart. But I'll go over and give her some baking soda tablets or something. The next morning in the wild mountain country, about 20 miles to the north of Portage, a very young horseman raced full speed toward a secluded camp in the hills and drew rein. Next morning was a leap before his horse had stopped running. Hey, Hello, Hello there. there. Hello, Tonto. It was Dan Reed, and his waiting friends, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, knew that something unusual had happened. I didn't expect you back from Portage until late afternoon, Dan. Uh, something happened in town? There's been a murder committed in Portage. And right now, there's half a dozen posses searching the country. Any of them heading this way? Yes, sir. That's why I rode so fast getting back here. They might find this camp and... Well, oh, Tonto, we'll break camp immediately. Uh, uh, tell me what happened, Dan. They're after a young doctor. His name is Carl Rand. He's accused of murdering an old woman with poison. A woman? That's right. Uh, any motive? Well, this woman, Miss Foreman, didn't want her niece, Marilyn, to marry the doctor. But they were to get married anyhow. Yesterday afternoon, Dr. Rand went over to talk to the old lady, and, and they had a terrible accident argument. Uh, then what? Dr. Rand asked old Miss Foreman. He gave her some kind of medicine for her nerves. At least that was what he said. About two hours later, the girl went back to the house and found her aunt dead. Who said it was poison? The coroner proved it. Sheriff started out to arrest Dr. Rand, but the girl warned him and he got away. And the girl must believe that Rand is innocent. Most people in town think he's guilty. Why? They know he's quarreled with the girl's aunt several times. 
Well, there's a big difference between a quarrel and a murder. Uh, let's go. Glad you hurried back here, Dan. But there's something else. What? I know where the murderer is. I know where he's hiding. You know uh, where? Let's not call any man a murderer without proof. How you know where a fella hides, Dan? Well, on my way to town this morning, I was just coming off that timbered slope the other side of Red Mesa, and I saw a rider coming from town pretty fast. So? I noticed that he pulled off the trail and headed right into the thick brush, and, and that made me suspicious. So I left my horse and crawled down the slope to see why. That might have been dangerous if you'd been caught. Well, golly, I didn't think of that at the time. Anyway, there's a kind of a big cave there about a hundred yards back from the trail. It'd be almost impossible to find if you didn't know where to look. You see fella go in cave, Dan? Yes, and, and I was pretty puzzled about it. Until I got to town and heard what had happened, then I realized that the man I had seen couldn't have been anyone else but the doctor they were looking for. Golly, I sure made Victor step coming back here. Hold it, all of you. First one moves, gets a taste of hot lead. Why, you... Steady, steady, Toto. Looks like someone followed you out here, Dan. Oh, golly, I shouldn't have taken... Go to the chair and get your hands up. Prado! Well, maybe you gents are partners of that murdering doc, huh? I've never seen the man in my life, Sheriff. No? And you got some other reason, I reckon, for wearing a mask on your face. I have. It's a personal reason. What do you want with us? You'll find out when you land in jail. I'll buckle those guns, you and the redskin. And Just her... a moment. Why are you taking us to jail? That's my business. And mine. You can't arrest a man for wearing a mask. Unless you have a better reason, we'll keep our guns. Then I'll arrest you for aiding and abetting and escaping murder. I heard that kid tell about the cave. Oh, golly. And he's going to show me where it is on our way into town. Then I'm going to drag that murdering pill pusher back to Portage and watch him stretch a brand new rope. Just a first-rate necktie party. No trial, no judge, no jury. Is that it? You bet that's it. You've got pretty swift ideas about justice in these And parts. I have my own ideas about justice. I also have my own ideas about a lawman who would hang a prisoner without a fair trial. Are oh, you sidewinder? You better watch your step. Or you might get the same treatment. Yes, I might if you had your way about it. Oh, Dan. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks for distracting his attention, Dan. Well, why, you... Your guns are damaged more than you are, Sheriff. You'll hang for this. You can't shoot the guns out of a lawman's hands and get away with it. I'd prefer to think I shot the guns out of a hangman's hand. You've got to lead me to that cave where Doc Rand is hiding. We shall. You'd better. You know what's good for you. In uh, just one hour. One hour? Why do we have to wait one hour? Then you ride to that cave and tell Dr. Rand we're coming. You can't do that. You can't let that murderer escape like that. And and you hope... can't hang any man without a trial by jury. Will you promise Rand a fair trial if we take you to him now? I won't promise you nothing, you sneaking outlaw. Go on, Dan. Tell the doctor that the sheriff is on his way. He'd better make tracks. Tell him to travel far and fast. You'll hang for this. You're going to run out of rope with all these hangings, my friend. Dan, come over here. Yes, sir. Keep the sheriff covered, Toto. Uh, me watch him. Dan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, get going. Come on, Victor! You may as well relax, Sheriff. We've got exactly 60 minutes before we hit the trail. Toto, settle up. I've got a job for you. curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. It was nearly noon when the Lone Ranger, riding directly behind Sheriff Jack Blair, met Dan Reed on the trail. Oh, Silver, oh, boy. Oh, Silver, oh, Silver, oh, Silver. Where's Tonto? Tonto will be with us after a while, Dan. Uh, did you see Dr. Rand? Yes, and I told him what you said about the sheriff being on his way. He was suspicious at first, but then he decided to believe what I said. He sure cleared out in a hurry. Which way did he go? Well, I... Come on, Dan. We promised the sheriff we'd show him the cave. Blast the confounded cave! I ain't after no cave. I'm after Carl Rand. Then you'd better be on your way, mister. I see here, you. You're obstructing justice. That's what you're doing. I don't mind obstructing your kind of justice. Now, oh, you'd better get along. You'll have to ride back to Portage and get some guns, you know. I'll go get guns. Lots of guns. And lots of men to handle them. And the next time I meet you... Adios. You can make that hasta la vista. We'll meet again. Get up. Get up. Golly, he sure was fit to be tied. We couldn't let a man be hung without a fair trial, could we, Dan? Well, golly, no. Of course not. Carl Rand is guilty. We can find him. But if he's innocent, the sheriff turned him over to a lynch mob. Well... That mistake could never be corrected, could it? No. Man's life, any man's life, is worth more than the kind of snap judgment our friend the sheriff could offer. Let's go. We're going to meet Tonto? No, Dan. We're going to that cave you mentioned. I hope we'll meet someone else that I have in mind. Come on, Silver. Long the late afternoon shadows were slanting down through the hills when Marilyn reined up on the ridge overlooking Red Mesa. For a long time, she sat motionless, studying the surrounding countryside. Then... Apparently satisfied, the slender girl dismounted and led the horse into the thick brush. A moment later, she ran down the slope toward the hidden cave and pushed through the concealing bushes. Carl? Carl? Where are you? Carl isn't here, Miss Marilyn. I'm asking you. What have you done? Where? Carl is safe enough for the present. For the present? But what are you... He's gone and safe if he's innocent. Oh, but he is. I know he is. How do you know? Well, why, he just is, that's all. No matter what anybody says, Carl wouldn't have done that off. Uh, please, don't think about it just now. But, but you and this boy... Uh, please I... consider us your friends. We hope to prove Carl's innocence. But how did you know about... This hiding place? This young man saw Dr. Rand come in here this morning. While he was telling me about it, the sheriff slipped up on our camp. We, uh... Well, detain the sheriff long enough for Carl to escape. Oh, I'm so glad. I know. I just know that Carl couldn't have poisoned. <laughs> but thank heaven he's free. They'll never catch him now, thanks to you. Don't thank me too soon, Miss Marilyn. If we find out that Carl is guilty, he'll be apprehended and brought to justice. But you said he'd escape. I sent a warning to him. I suggested that he hit the trail. I also sent a man to follow him. And you mean that... One of the best trackers in the West is following Carl Rand at this moment. He's an Indian named Toto. Oh, then you... I wanted to help your friend to escape a hangman's rope. I didn't intend that he should escape justice. You see, there is a difference. Oh, but he couldn't have killed her. I'll never believe that. I'll do everything to prove his innocence. Good girl, and perhaps we can help you. Now will you tell me the whole story about you and Carl? Yes. I'll tell you all that I can. Darkness had fallen when the girl returned to the town of Portage. Oh, oh boy, oh. Dan Reed was at her side. Uh, hurry, Dan. Get your horse inside the stable out of sight. Sure. Here, let me take your horse, too, Miss Merlin. All right. Then come to the house. By the way... Yes? You still haven't told me who your outlaw friend is. Well, just don't worry about it, miss. And take my word for it. He's not an outlaw. I'm almost inclined to believe you, Dan. An hour later... Marilyn Foreman and Dan were finishing a welcome supper when they heard a clatter of hoofbeats in the yard outside. 
I don't know who it is, but, but it may be Sheriff Blair. Harry, you mustn't be seen here. The sheriff will remember. Quick, him to the next room. All right, Miss Marilyn. Just a minute. Oh, good evening, Sheriff. Evening, Marilyn. You, uh, mind if I step in a minute? Why, uh, you see, I... Yeah. Yeah, I see. You've just been having company for supper. Stop it. You can't come in here. Well, now we'll see. What, what do you want here? I don't reckon you've been eating two suppers all by yourself, Marilyn. Why, I... Marilyn. Uh... Listen, I ain't so all fired anxious about this job of sheriff and I. Ain't so crazy about catching up with Carl Rand either. What do you mean? I. You know how I felt about you for a long time. Let's. Let's get out of here, honey. We'll go to San Antonio, get married, and have a big honeymoon in the East. I'll tell my father. Now, wait a minute, Sheriff. When I told you I wouldn't marry you, I meant it. You did, huh? Well. <laughs> What are you going to do with that gun? I'm going to take a look for Carl Rand. Right in that next room. But he's not in there. I swear he isn't. Please. If he ain't in there, you got nothing to worry about. If he is, then I reckon I'd still make a better husband than no husband at all. No, you can't. I won't let you go in there. You've no right to search this house. Here, you let go. No. Let go, you plain no. What? Mel. Dan! Dan Reed! Back from I, I was trying to stop him from going into that room. I, I didn't want him to. What can I do? I, I shot him. Wait here. I'm going after the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? The man you thought was an outlaw. Stay right here and do the best you can until we come back. The Lone Ranger. Arriving nearly exhausted at the Basque Man's Rendezvous, Dan Reed found the Lone Ranger and Tonto together. The boy lost no time in telling what had happened to the sheriff. You need a doctor. There's only one available within a hundred miles. You mean Carl Rand? Right, Dan. Tonto told me where he's hiding. And you're going after him? Yes. Your horses are nearly played out. Silver hadn't had a workout today. Hey, boy. Come here, big fella. Stay here and rest until I return. Good luck, sir. Let big fella. Take more than luck to nail the killer we're after. Come oh, Silver! Jack, I shouldn't have struggled with you, but you had no business forcing your way in here without a warrant. I don't care about catching Rand. I... What about me? I'm shot. My head. You might have had a doctor here if you hadn't run him out of town ahead of a lynch mob. I know. I know. I... Marilyn, my head hurts. I... I don't want to die. And I don't want you to die. Try to rest a little. I've already sent for help. Help? But who? Listen. Who, who'd you send for? Who's coming? Carl. How is he, Marilyn? You shouldn't have come. Why, you'll hang. They'll hang you. I explained all that to Dr. Rand. He was willing to take the chance. Willing? Why, why sure I was willing. He told me that you'd shot the sheriff and they might put you in jail. Oh. Better get busy with your patient, Doctor. It's a very nasty wound in his head. I uh, hope you can save him. Oh, but, Doc, don't let me die. I don't want to Shut die. up. No one wants to die, including me. But if I save your life, I suppose you'll hang me for it, huh? No. No, 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 no I won't. I won't let him touch you. Marilyn, clean towels and lots of hot water. Hurry. You, mister, help me hold him while I, I try to save his life. Like that for a doc. Well, I, I'm sorry, Jack. I did the best I could. I there's nothing more I can do. You lie. You're letting me die. You're killing me. The doctor isn't lying to you, Blair. He's done all that's in his power. It's uh, too bad. Well, they're killing me. They're letting me die. 
Don't let him make him stop killing me. Oh, my head. Sheriff, at a time like this, you'd better clean up your conscience a little. Oh. I got nothing to lose, is that it? What makes you think my conscience ain't clean? There's only a suggestion, Jack. All right. I killed her. Oh, sure. I figured, just like now, nothing to lose. But I thought it was a slick way to get rid of the dark here. I... When I heard you and him would get married right away, I, I killed her. I... I spread the news around town about a big argument between her and, and the dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny, Doc. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I, I was just thinking of what the masked man said about... About strong medicine. It was a chance and it worked. What on earth are you The Lone Ranger told me about meeting you and you telling him all about us, Marilyn. He figured out that Jack Blair was the one to gain by my disappearance. Oh, no. Well, I wouldn't have married him I if know. He... But it looks as if the sheriff was willing to take his chances, even up to murder. You said Lone Ranger. Right. The boy Dan Reed told him he didn't think you were critically wounded. So the masked man put me up to making some... some strong medicine... Worked out all right, too. What do you mean? The bullet just grazed your scalp, Sheriff. You missed the pearly gates by a mile. What? Then I'm going to live. But you'll have a mighty slim chance of missing the pearly gates when they swing that new rope of yours in the cottonwoods, my friend. No. I won't let them. I... No. They can't hurt me. <laughs> Strongest medicine I ever used. A man's guilty conscience. No. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.